So I'm hoping this works. Uh, I just created a pump system for me to evac out these cars. I needed to do something. I haven't taken the financial decision to actually buy a AC system. Um, but what I did is I took this uh, fancy old compressor from a really old AC unit that happened to have sprung a leak anyway. And the compressor was good yet. So I took it and I adapted it to a couple of AN fittings and from there I adapted it to other fittings to adapt it to other fittings in order to get it to work. I mean, it's kind of a conglomerate mess. Then I just kind of taped up some wires to make sure the pump actually fired and I just plug it in. Um, it's a temporary deal right now. But uh, I'm gonna see how it works. It Hopefully it'll it'll work. The pump did fire. I just tried running the pump to, to try the pump and it did fire and run so hopefully it'll work. Let's, let's uh, give it a shot here. It pumps it really fast. 40, 30, 20. It's getting quieter. 10. And we're at zero. We're actually pulling a vacuum, which is impressive. There, close the valves, unplug the pump. And we have just evac'd the system on this car. We now have no pressure in there. Definitely some in there. Now, just to be sure, I'm going to take and hook it up to my vacuum pump and uh, see if I get anything out of this thing. I'm sure there's a little bit in this line because that was the high side of the, the pump system. And yeah, definitely some in there. Going through. Hear that? So we're, we're letting that little bit that was in there bent out. It's almost gone now. A little blast at the end. Okay, so that's as good as I can do for an evac system, a homemade evac system. Very little waste, but uh, there is some. I'm going to pull a vacuum on this just to be sure. Okay, so for some reason I can't pull a vacuum that way. Uh, that's not the end of the world though. So I will. Uh, I got just a little bit of pressure that's building as it sits here. I suppose the Freon discharging cooled it down. Now it uh, heated back up. So now I got to take this big bar off of here. It's in my way for that expansion valve. But uh, once I get that out of the way, it'll be nice and easy. So here is a expansion valve. This is the old one. You can see it's got its numbers on there, whatever. See how this is lower than this is? That's because it flows into here, down, and out. And this is the restriction for from the high side going into the low side to cool down the Freon because it's at lower pressure. So then it goes through the evaporative core comes into here and goes through and the temperature that comes through here this is a rheostat activates this rheostat and controls where that pintle sits here's the shiny new unit they even go as far as double packaging it so they had a wrapper on top of this wrapper kind of nice of them and they send along these nice little gaskets Nice little o-ring. So I'm going to replace these o-rings in the unit on where all the lines go in and out.
So I went ahead and I started pulling this apart uh, because I have to do the compressor and the receiver dryer uh, or dryer filter, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm unable to take the footage of me tearing it down. There is just not enough room. So it's just too close to the wall on this particular vehicle, especially for where I'm working. So I'm just going to show you what I'm doing and then uh, continue on and show you again. But there's the receiver dryer. You can see I got the front bumper pulled off. I have the strap on here. Now there's a giant core support right here. It goes all the way up, all the way across. There's bolts on top and on both sides, you know. And then, of course, there's two bolts in the front here. So I pull the bumper off, I take all those bolts loose, and then I take the strap, and I'm using that to hold it so that I have this large gap here. Now, the reason for that large gap there is because the compressor, see it right there, is right there, right? So I need to be able to squeeze it through this hole. Uh, I tried to drop the cradle a little bit, but this bolt is stuck. I have penetrant soaking on it. I'm hoping I can still drop it a little because that'll give me some more room. But uh, I got to take the belt loose, which I'm slowly making more and more room to do. Uh, but yeah, I have that assembly tilted forward with that strap. So you can see the amount of gap between where it goes. So that's where I'm sitting right now. I'm going to continue taking this thing apart. And uh, I'll get back to you when I'm ready to, to show you some more so okay so you can see I got the bumper back on here um, I got the compressor out replaced it see the new new compressor in there so there's the new compressor the new dryer bolts up right there I have the bolts that hold that thing all in I also ran into an issue with that coolant pipe where it rotted through and that's replaced. So here is the coolant pipe. I'll show you how rusty this thing is. You see the hole in it right there. That's where one of those clamps just like this one go and the water sits there with salt and whatever else from the roads and it corrodes the hell out of this thing. So and there's that pipe just rotted no other. Let's see here. Oh, it dented the end pretty bad. Oh, created a second hole. Let's see if I can show you. Actually, I'll shine the light in there. That'll show you. See the two holes in there pretty easy now. So, there's the two holes. Was one, but now it's two. Uh, this thing's pretty ugly underneath. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this thing down. Go ahead and get it down, get the antifreeze filled up, and then uh, we'll get the Freon all charged, and we'll continue on from there, get the car running, and now it should actually work the way it's supposed to. Uh, the old pump is right here. Just an ugly bastard. I mean, it's just hideous, gross, covered in who knows what. Oop, there goes a bunch of oil. Now I got a mess to clean up. See the seals. See the seals there. Sorry about the thing dangling. Lens cover. So here's the old unit. Oh, it doesn't feel very good. It's like too smooth. Wow. I've never had one that smooth. No wonder. All the seals must be out. Oh, there's one. So it's like there's one piston that might be compressing. You know, there's uh, several pistons in these things. It's got like a like a wash plate in these. It sits like this, and it does this weird oscillating thing, and then there's a bunch of pistons inside, and they compress the gas. All right, it feels good to have a little more room back. I was able to push the car back now that I have the bottom half buttoned up. All right, the last time I did this charging thing, I actually charged this thing without using a scale. I based it off of pressures, and uh, 
I heated up this tank, the charge tank, uh, or, or the recovery tank in this case, and uh, just heated it up enough to make sure it's got more pressure than the rest of the system. And then I put the stuff in there and took a estimated guess as to how much I needed. It ended up absolutely perfect. I left the gauges on, ran the vehicle on the last vehicle I did, and I didn't have to add or remove any. So uh, I'm going to attempt the same thing this time, and uh, if it works out good, I suppose I'll continue doing it from now on that way because it just works so good. cold. It is blowing real cold. Let's watch this sucker drop down. Okay, we'll let that drop for a little bit. It's down to 50. It's definitely blowing cold. Disconnect high side. And then we will take the high side and we'll bring it into the low side. Oops. Or maybe not. Oh, I gotta flip the hose to show the valve is on the wrong side. See the valve in there? I gotta have that on the other end of the hose so it doesn't come out. Let's try this again. Okay, so we got High side open, now we open the low side and watch what happens. The low side sucks the high side in, that way we can drop the pressures on both of them. Now that I actually have an AC machine, so to speak, that I can use, I will take these pressures and I'll suck them out with the AC machine, put them back in that reserve tank of mine. Not as good as I thought it would be, but it's definitely not too shabby. 50 degrees coming in here, it feels really cool in this car. It's a hot day today too. Um, that's the garage temp since I opened it. It's gone up a little bit. It was at 68. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this car out. It is chilly in here. It is really chilly in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this thing continue here. We're outside sitting in the sun. And recirculate. We still have 55 ish degrees. So we'll, go, we'll figure, figure it's probably 72 degrees in here right now. I'm trying to get to 60. See if I ought to, it'll go down. Oh, yeah, it drops the fan way down when I hit auto. So it sees it as cool enough in here. But, yep successful job got the thing to cool down quite a bit and uh, now I can go grab some lunch and get on with my other projects 
you like this video, please uh, make sure you don't forget to hit that like button. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, I could really use shares right now. Uh, being new in the YouTube industry or whatever you want to call it. Um, I can't spread the word unless I have your help. So please don't forget to, to share this video content. If you see anything you like that's worthy of sharing, please share it. Facebook, Twitter, if that's a thing. I don't even do Twitter. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Just share share away. Uh, please don't forget to do that. I can really use it right now to get any more subscribers. The more subscribers, the better. The, the more subscribers, the more content I can bring. Uh, right now, I'm having trouble concentrating on doing all this video editing and taking the time to take the videos. I've been missing several vehicles. So, uh, I try and do the ones that seem maybe a little more useful. I don't know. But I could certainly find little bits and pieces of everything that could be either fun, useful, cool, you know, that kind of stuff. So make sure you share this stuff. Um, that's huge for me right now. Thanks for watching.